In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Dear parishioners, dear parishioners at home, we've been talking a lot in recent days about the Holy Ghost, obviously because of the Feast of Pentecost and the octave afterwards. But what was and what is actually the work of the Holy Ghost in the Catholic Church? What has he brought about in the and through the church over the last 2,000 years. In other words, what does he do in and through the church? And our answer is always the same. Our Lord gave us the answer. He told us when he predicted the arrival of the Holy Ghost, he said that the Holy Ghost would come to give testimony of me, and you shall give testimony. This is what happened, because with your degree, for example, in Mark chapter 16, the apostles, under the influence of that Holy Ghost, going forth, preached everywhere, the Lord working with all, and confirming the word with signs that follow. In other words, as Christ predicted, they gave testimony. They were faithful. And the Holy Ghost has given testimony of Christ for 2,000 years now, still going on, and will be until the end of time. Now, dear parishioners, today is Trinity Sunday. Our modern world is, shall we say, apathetic to, Trinity, to the Trinity, indifferent to Christ. The rioting recently and is still going on shows us that pretty clearly, doesn't it? These protests look like scenes out of hell. And don't be fooled, even these so-called peaceful protesters are promoting a dangerous movement, which is Marxist in its origin, a movement started by three women women given over to unnatural vice. And so how can we expect something rational, godly, something good for the country to come from those who reject the rational? They reject the logos, which is rationality incarnate, our Lord Jesus Christ, and instead embrace a perverted sexuality failed economic systems. And our modernist church leaders are also obviously apathetic to Christ. How else to explain these interminable lockdowns? Except for those who are protesting, of course, I guess COVID doesn't affect them. Just those who go to mass. And this denial of Sunday mass for you, the Catholic faithful, Mass, you remember that? Where we worship the Trinity? And these leaders too are often Marxists in their political orientation. I won't talk about their other orientation. And they see us traditional faithful Catholics as reactionary, antiquated, too traditional. And anyway, just a small negligible, insignificant bunch of kooks to be safely ignored. In order to understand the testimony of the Holy Ghost through the church concerning Christ, I think we need to ask ourselves three questions, dear faithful at home. First, what would the modern world be without Christ and the testimony of the Holy Ghost? Imagine, what would the world be like if the church had never existed? That's the first question. Second thing, what is this testimony of the Holy Ghost through the church concerning Christ for our world? And three, what are our duties as faithful Catholics so that we may fulfill Christ's prediction when he said, and you shall give testimony? What are our duties in that regard? wasn't meant just for the 12 apostles. So the first point, 
What would the world be without Christ, without the testimony of the Holy Ghost and the church? Well, I think we've had a dress rehearsal of that recently, haven't we? Think about it. What would the world be like without the church, without Christ, without the Holy Ghost? Well, it would surely be a world without a proper philosophy of life. Seen a little bit of that lately, haven't we? We've seen it in the church, a rejection of St. Thomas largely. Think of it, no beautiful Catholic art anywhere in the world. Think of the madness of modern art. A donkey could paint better with his tail, some stuff. Architecture, think of that. Think of modern church architecture. What about Catholic charity all around the world? Well, a lot of those charities have already been subverted too, haven't they? Support evil all around the world. Contraception, abortion. World without a priesthood? Well, that's largely happened during this pandemic too, hasn't it? The church is locked. Priests say, well, a world without religious orders. Not hard to imagine. They're dying already. The contemplative branches have been corrupted by a document called Orons. Basically wrecks the contemplative orders. Imagine the world without a sacramental system, without a moral code. Again, it's pretty easy for us to do that now, isn't it? We're living in it. These riots show us what the world would be like. A hopeless place, barbaric, brutal, aimless thugs out on the streets, desperate. A world in which violence and savagery are seen as virtues. A world where criminals are lauded as heroes. A world without the church will be sitting in darkness and the shadow of death. Our second question, what is that testimony of the Holy Ghost through the church concerning Christ unto our modern world? Not to know is to fulfill Ezekiel chapter 12. It is to quote, have eyes to see and see not, and ears to hear and hear not, neither do they understand. And there are many such people today, many who see no good at all in the history of our church or even now. We could point out to, the, to them the extraordinary missionary work done historically. This work bears testimony that the work of the Holy Ghost through the church existed and still exists to some extent, although this has fallen on evil days. The Catholic charities have done and continue to do some good work, the work in education, for example, at all levels, hospital care, care for the poor, so on. Third question, what are our duties so that we may fulfill Christ's words and you shall give testimony? How do we do that? How can we, in our own small way or large way, give testimony of Christ? People think that it was only at Vatican II that the laity were told about their responsibility to share the faith with others. That's not true. Catholic action, you hear of that? But how do we do it? You can't give what you don't have. So we must have Christ in our heart, Christ on our lips, Christ in our life. As I said before, we've got to think Catholic, speak Catholic, live Catholic. As we read in Matthew, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And so many of the great popes of the last century taught us our duty. We wish to fulfill and give testimony of Christ. And the first duty they told us about is from scripture, love not the world. 
nor the things which are in the world. For all that is in the world is the concupiscence of the flesh, the concupiscence of the eyes, and the pride of life. The world passes away, and the concupiscence thereof. But he that doth the will of God abideth forever. Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh in his concupiscences. This is what they taught us, great popes, 20th century, or how different is the modern teaching of the last 60 years where we've been encouraged to be open to the world. The church has basically hitched up her skirts and joined in the mad dance with the world. What a disaster that's turned out to be. The vicars of Christ up to and including Pope Pius XII taught us that Catholics should esteem all things in the light of the Holy Ghost and must prefer the things of eternity to the things of this passing world. In other words, faith and virtue are supposed to mean more to us than prestige or influence. Someone should have told that to Notre Dame University. They sold out for prestige back in the 60s. Duty? Supposed to mean more than pleasure. Pleasure. Think of that. Contraceptive mentality in the church today. Avoiding duty, seeking pleasure. Think of all the annulments granted. It's like 300 a year. Free Vatican II. What is it now? 57,000 a year? Honesty. Support's supposed to mean more to us than money, does it? Purity, more than popularity. Charity, more than being too clever for our own good. Self-control or self-denial, supposed to mean more to us than worldly success, does it? Another duty the great popes taught us was this, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your father who is in heaven. St. Matthew's gospel. Yes, they taught us the gospel clearly about twisting it to fit some crazy environmentalist or liberation theology narrative. Those good popes reminded us that, quote, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever modest, whatsoever just, whatsoever holy, whatsoever lovely, whatsoever of good fame, if there be any virtue, if any praise of discipline, think on these things, the things which you have both learned and received, these do ye. In other words, dear faithful, a holy life is the Catholic's testimony of Christ. Living a holy life, that's how we give testimony, first of all. And St. Paul tells us to take unto ourselves the armor of God and to stand in all things perfect. Ephesians chapter 6. This means that we should do what we can to defend and promote the one true faith in our circles. That's a duty as well. Our Lord told us, when the paraclete cometh, whom I will send you from the Father, the spirit of truth who proceedeth from the Father, he shall give testimony of me, and you shall give testimony. We have the Holy Ghost, dear parishioners. Our beloved church, although currently facing many grave crises, is a living church. Without that Holy Ghost, it would be a dead church. You see, the Holy Ghost is to the Catholic Church what the soul is to the body. And we're a part, a very small part, of this living church, of this church militant. And so, dear faithful, let us go forward, bravely giving testimony of Christ to our modern world, so let's face it, it's 
lost its way. Deus will. God wills it. May God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.